So this is going to be our first energy example. Uh, basically, remember that we've got a trapezoidal channel. And in this case, we don't know the depths. Um, but we do know that the side slopes are 2 to 1. And that the bottom width, uh, lowercase b, uh, is 10 feet. And so we're going to solve this problem. What we want to know is um, we've got this step here. It's a fairly localized step. It's hard to draw it uh, to scale. And so the slope's been exaggerated here. Um, but we've got you know a relatively small uh, step down. And we want to know what's going on. So uh, on any of these problems, the first thing that we want to do is we want to find normal depth and critical depth and get the energies for the both of those. So we're going to go to our Excel spreadsheet and put all the information in. Um, so this was, I've got all that here and I've already solved the problem. So let's just put another number in there. Okay, so we've got the bottom width, the side slope, the bottom slope, the Manning's roughness coefficient and the flow rate all plugged in. Um, the challenge here is that first thing we want to do is get the normal depth. So to get the normal depth, what we're going to do, that's that's the Manning equation is what describes that, right? So normal depth is where the slope of friction uh, is equal to the bottom slope. In other words, it's the water is at something like terminal velocity. It's not speeding up or slowing down as it goes downhill. Remember that we we can't, this isn't a river. This is a long straight stretch of channel that is uniform upstream and downstream. And so to figure out what the depth would normally be in those conditions, given this flow rate, which is reasonable that we would be provided a flow rate, um, what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to guess and check depth until the Manning flow rate is equal to the flow rate that we have in mind. So we're going to goal seek. So again, what goal seek does is it guesses numbers. 0.5 gets us closer. Uh, sorry, 1.5 or or uh, you know 1.3 gets us really close, but we went too far. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of doing that manually, we're going to do it uh, automated through Excel. So we're going to set this Manning value cell uh, to the value of 200 by changing the depth. And so 1.33 is the answer. Let's write that down. And if we were being real slick, we would have recognized that the energy uh, is 3.33. Five, two. And that corresponds, and then the fruit number also is greater than one. So let's take a look at that. So here we are. There's the energy, and the fruit number is greater than one. So that means that this is upstream controls. So we're going to want to start upstream and go downstream. Um, let's now figure out what the critical depth would be. And so to get the critical depth, we're gonna, we could guess again a bunch of numbers, so let's try 1.5. Okay, that's better, but that's not, we wanna set the fruit number equal to one, so uh, let's try two. Hey, that's pretty close, and it ends up being 2.01, but we're gonna goal seek instead. We don't wanna do that by hand, so if we go to goal seek, set it to value one by changing the depth, going to give us the answer. So 2.1 and 2.79 uh, feet of energy. So let's go back and kind of start sketching out what this is going to look like. So critical depth is something like right here. And then normal depth.
Okay, so um, we're going to start upstream and go downstream. And we're going to continue at that uh, going downstream until we reach something that changes. So basically, it, the water's going so fast it can't see what's going on downstream. So we're going to race along right at uniform depth or at, criti at normal depth. So if we were to label this water surface profile, this is uniform. Uh, I'm going to call it normal often. But what that means is that if we go upstream and downstream of a particular spot, say, uh, it's the same depth upstream and downstream. Until we get to this change in slope. All right, so to work this problem, we're going to say that from one side of the slope to the other is a relatively insignificant change, uh, insignificant friction loss. And so uh, we're going to use Bernoulli's equation to get from uh, one side to the other. So let's set up some ground rules. Let's call let's call this section one, and we'll call this section two. And uh, so if we were to solve this before we had been exposed to uh, something like specific energy, what we would probably want to do is we'd probably want to say, that the total head at one is equal to the total head at two. And we can break that out into uh, the elevation head at one plus the pressure head at one plus the velocity head at one is equal to the elevation head at two, pressure head at two, and the velocity head at two. Okay. so. That's great. That's stuff that we should uh, kind of remember. Um, and then here's something new. This thing, that's the specific energy at one. There's the specific energy at two. And uh, so what we can do is we can rearrange this thing and solve for the specific energy at two because um, we actually know um, what's going on at section one. We need to know what's happening at section two. So um, what we can say is uh, that the energy at two is equal to the energy at one plus Z one minus Z, oops, minus Z two. Not sure if I can erase that. There we go. And so, uh, well, so energy at one is actually the normal energy, right? Because we started upstream and we're working our way downstream from normal depth all the way till we get to here. So we actually know what's going on at energy one. That's the normal depth energy. And then this thing is our step height. Uh, so we can just call that delta Z of 0 0.1 feet. So if we do the math on this, then um, then we get three point five two plus zero point one or three point six two. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna goal seek for that energy by changing the depth. All right, so I'm going to have to show you this here in a second, but you want to be clear that whenever your Excel is going to guess and check the depth, it's going to guess the depth and check the energy. And there's actually two energies that will, sorry, two depths that will have the same energy. Those are called alternate depths. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, but so let's work this problem and then, and then we'll talk about it. But uh, in the end, what that means is that if you know that you want a supercritical answer, then you need to have a first guess that's also supercritical. So I'm going to put in a really small number. I want this screwed number to be greater than one. All right, so let's goal seek. We want to set the energy equal to 3.62 by changing the depth guessing we got our answer 
1.3 is the answer. Okay, so So we can draw our water surface profile in now. It's going to drop down to this depth. And then we'll get an S3 curve. Okay, so I was, I was saying that there was two energies, the alternate energies uh, alternate depths and that's because if we if we draw out the specific energy curve sp specific energy diagram it looks like this the curve looks like this in the equation that we've got there's actually a third choice that's down here. Um, so there's really, there's three answers to this problem. It'd be like if you're using the quadratic equation, it's got the plus or minus. Well, we've got the plus or minus here, but uh, it's not explicit. So what we need to do is we just need to be sure that we are guessing in the right region that we're looking for. So for example, um, here's our energy at normal. So that specific energy was 3.52 feet, and that corresponded with a depth of 1.33. And then we went down our step, and I'll exaggerate this a little bit, and we gained some energy. So that is delta Z, that's our step height, 0 0.1 feet. And so this energy is 3.62 feet and the and the depth is 1.30. So that's how how that works, but we could go in and if we had told if I had goofed up and I had said hey, Excel, uh, I want an energy of 3.62, but I had put in a first guess way up here. It would make guesses and it would converge towards this answer up here and it would it would spit out the same answer. So let's, let's do that real quick, just because it'll be fun. Um, so I want to get this 3.62, but I want to get the alternate depth. So I'm just going to put in a really high number here because I want to guess a fruit number that's less than one. And then we'll goal seek to 3.62. All right, so 3.44 is the alternate depth. So that's our first example. Um, let's look at the next example. So this one's the same, but now there's a step up. It's the same height of step, it's just a step up. So we'll work the problem the same. Um, we can come in here with critical depth. And again, starting from this idea of Bernoulli, here's section one, here's section two, uh, H1 is equal to H 
to um, and last time we went through the example where we said that well what that really means is that e2 is equal to e1 but in this case the step is up so we're going to subtract off 0 0.1 um, so that is 3.42 feet and uh, so we'll goal seek that uh, now and remembering um, that we're still super critical here. So we're going super critical uh, all the way down to that. Now, the critical energy, I didn't write that down this time. Let's write it down, is 2.79 feet. That turns out to be the minimum energy that's needed to pass this flow. And so if I had done this calculation and this number was less than that, then that would mean a hydraulic jump happens here and we're not really ready to handle that. We want to go through some simpler examples first. Uh, we need to do a delta x calculation that I haven't introduced yet. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like on the specific energy diagram. Why it wouldn't work. So there's normal energy. And there's an alternate depth up here that we went through last time, but we didn't do this time. And now we're going to subtract off some energy. In this case, we're going to subtract off 0 0.1 feet to get our new energy. This is the energy at section 2. But here's our minimum energy, and that was 2.79. So we can actually do the, the math and figure out uh, how much of a step up we could have. This is a step up. How much of a step up we could have without having a hydraulic jump. Um, so the intent of our example is to do the goal seek here, recognizing that it's going to be a super critical answer. So I want a super critical answer. I'm going to put in a guess at point 0.1 just so that we know that it's fruit number of uh, greater than 1. Uh, and then we're going to goal seek the energy. That's wrong one. We're going to change the depth. It's going to guess a bunch of depths. 1.37 is the answer, and our there's our energy. So let's check that out. So our water surface profile it goes up. And then it comes down, and I didn't exaggerate that enough, but that is going to be an S2 curve. And I gave you a little bit of a hint last time as to why it would be an S2 curve. And, and so I'll show it again. There, here's region 1, here's region 2, here's region 3. And those are delineated by critical, normal, uh, and then the base of the channel. So that's our last example for this video. Um, we're going to do a bunch more and we've got to do, we've got to introduce a couple more concepts. Uh, we'll do some alternate depth stuff and we'll do some step up, some bumps, uh, with energy and then we'll do hydraulic jumps.